Encrypting file service is part of Windows Server 2016 as well as previous versions of Windows Server. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our domain controller, we're on a domain controller called DC01, and we're going to use the certification authority installed in a previous video, which if you missed, you can go on the previous video in this playlist and take a look how to install that. And then we're going to issue an EFS certificate for our clients. So let's start in our domain controller by going to Tools, and we'll go to Certification Authority. So you'll need to have already installed this to make this work. And Microsoft does not recommend that you put the Certification Authority onto a domain controller, but in this case, we're only using this in a test environment, and we only have domain controllers. Functionally, there's no difference. It's just a security issue. All right, so we're in our Certification Authority, and we've expanded our server. So we're going to right-click on our certificates template, the certificate templates, and click Manage to open the templates console. So click on Manage, and it brings up this whole new console. And these are all templates that come with the server. So if we look for our basic EFS certificate, we're going to right-click and choose Properties, and we can see that everything's all grayed out because this is just a template. So what we need to do is we need to copy this so we can actually use it. So we'll choose Duplicate Template. So under Certification Authority, the way this works is whatever the lowest version of the server, and we can see it goes all the way to 2016, is how compatible the certificate will be. So by choosing 2003, we can choose backwards compatibility to older versions of servers. And same thing with the certificate recipient. So if we want to, we can go ahead and change this to 2016. Go ahead and click OK. And we'll change the certificate recipient to Windows 10 2016 as well. And click OK. Now we'll go into the General tab. And we'll rename this to EFS 2016. So it's a little bit more descriptive for us. We can change the validity period if we want, and we also want to make sure that it's set to publish certificate in Active Directory, because so we're going to be pushing this out to our clients. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 10 years, just so we don't have to keep uh, renewing this quite so often. Let's go to the Request Handling tab. We'll click the down, uh, drop down on the Purpose, and we'll just review that our options are encryption, signature and encryption, or signature and matched logon. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at encryption. And now we're going to go to the superseded templates. We'll go, we'll go ahead and click Add. Choose the basic EFS. And what happens here is when a request for an EFS certificate is made, only the new EFS 2016 certificate is going to be used instead of the older version. Let's go ahead and apply, make sure everything works okay, looks good, and we'll click OK. And there is our new EFS 2016 template in the bottom. Now we're going to go to Server Manager, we'll go to Tools, and Group Policy Management. Let's go ahead and expand our Group Policy, Domains, and let's go ahead and right-click and choose to create a new Group Policy object, and we'll call it Cert Auto Enroll. and click OK. There's our new policy. And now we're going to edit it by right-clicking and choosing Edit. So this policy will allow us to push this out to our clients, and it's going to be this new EFS certificate we just created. Now we're going to expand the user configuration, because this is going to apply to the users. And we're going to go to Policies, Windows Settings, Secure, security settings, public key, go ahead and expand that a little bit. We'll go ahead and click the public key policies. Now we'll choose the certificate services client auto enrollment. Now we're going to choose enabled on the configuration model. We'll choose the click the renewed expired certificates and update pending certificates. And now we'll go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and close. 
And we're back at our group policy management. Let's right click on our cert auto enroll and make sure it says the link is enabled, which it is. If it's not, go ahead and check it. Now we can close the group policy management console. Let's go back to our certificates template and we'll right click and go to properties. And we're going to go to the security tab. Now we're going to go to domain users and make sure that the domain users have the enroll permission, which I see that they do. And also make sure we have the auto enroll option and click apply. And now we'll go ahead and click OK. Now we can close the certificate templates console. And we're back in the certification authority console. Let's go ahead and right click on our server and go to properties. Let's go to the policy module tab and then we'll click on properties. Make sure the box that says follow the settings in the certificate template is checked and click OK. Let's go ahead and click OK and now click on certificate templates. We'll right click, choose new and certificate template to issue. So now we're going to have our certificate that we created earlier to be issued. So we'll find our EFS 2016 certificate and click OK. And that adds it in the certificate templates that we can issue to users. And there it is at the top. Our certificate authority is now ready to issue our new EFS certificate through the auto enrollment group policy. So that is how we set up EFS auto enrollment for an encrypting file system certificate to get pushed out to our users using Windows Server 2016. Active Directory, and Certification Authority.